How about now? I've got a couple of sliders. I don't know which slider is which. Um, I can hear me on that, so that's something. Hi all. Okay. Um, Hi, this is still a technical test. <laughs> As you are finding out, um, I'm using a different microphone, different camera. Microphone, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I think it's taking it from my laptop. I don't know. Uh, so hopefully this is a bit better than the previous streams. We'll see. Um, as I was setting up for this, got an email from Sabretooth. They have 15% off at the moment. You don't need a code. Uh, they do carving burrs, so if you're interested in carving, maybe you'd like some of their burrs. Nat, if you're watching, please don't buy more burrs. You've got enough. Um, Frank, how big my workshop is? It's 6.5 by 5.5, so 6.5 that way, 5.5 that way. All right, so today I want to look at the new Arbitech Mini Pro that they sent out. This is this cutter, I'll get a little bit closer. So that's this cutter here. Which you can't see because my lighting's terrible. Um, so the new cutter launched last week, a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. It's sort of one of the problems I find with a lot of Arbitex tools is that they have this weird overlap where I don't really know where it's meant to fit in the market. Um, the Mini Pro sort of replaces the tur Mini Turbo and sort of replaces the Mini Industrial. It's kind of a blend of both. I think it's if you don't have the Mini... If you've got the Mini Carver, which I think is a great tool, this is probably a good uh, second blade to have. I've never been a huge fan of the mini turbo on the shaft because I find it's just a bit vibrating and a bit hard to control. It's supposed to go on a regular angle grinder like so and you work like that. It doesn't have cutters on the sides, it can uh, follow templates, that's great, but the problem is I actually can't see what I'm doing. You can take the blade off and put it on the mini carver, put it on this tool, 
And it works pretty well. Uh, it works better on the Mini Grinder than the Mini Karma because of spacing issues, but that's neither here nor there. The big change is that this Mini Pro has cutouts, so you can't follow templates anymore, but you can attack it from the face or from the side, which in the context of this tool is actually pretty nice. I think, I haven't actually used it yet. So I'll get a close up of uh, the tools so you can have a better look at how they've sort of evolved. So the mini industrial fact the mini carver used to come with this um, or mini grinder sorry used to come with this blade mini industrial is an upgrade from that at the same time the mini turbo still exists and this sort of replaces the mini turbo at least for my usage you can see it's a very similar blade these are sharpenable teeth. You can unscrew them with the included Torx thingy. Unscrew them, rotate them, you've got a fresh edge. So that's what I want to look at today. Um, I haven't given it a shot at all, so I'll get that attached and see how we go. So installing it should just be, oh, yeah. Like that. Arbitech have moved away from plastic packaging, so it comes in a nice little cardboard box. I like the new style. It's um, new branding they've got since the Mini Carver. It's a bit nicer than the uh, almost more 90s style they had. <laughs> So I will kill the sound for this because it's going to be horribly loud. So just bear with me one moment while I get suited up for PPE and turn off the sound.
Okay. As you can see, that uh, makes a fair bit of mess. But, um, initial impression is that's leaving a really smooth cut. Uh, and it is quite a deep cut. I didn't realise how bad this piece of wood was for video purposes. It's a um, funny contrast, but it's really quite smooth and it's cut quite deep relatively quickly with a reasonable amount of control. Being able to sort of do the face planing is interesting. So I'll switch over to the mini industrial on the mini carver. So this will have a different uh, pitch to it because this is not the same variable speed motor, but uh, it's got about the same amount of power. It doesn't have the dust collection attachment, but it works the same way. Uh, the big thing is that this has got a much smaller kerf. I'm going to say that's probably about 4mm versus 8mm. And it's a pointier, barely, a pointier uh, cutter. So this is much better for finer detail. But it is harder to lay it on its face to get as much uh, cutting action as the Mini Pro. Oh, before I do that, here is a fun pencil that I picked up. Uh, looks like a Stanley knife or a utility knife. It's called the Sharp Draw. And yeah, funnily enough, it draws. I'd got this as a gimmick uh, from Carbotech. It, it works okay, so I think it's like a carbon fiber reinforced pencil, which I, I don't know if anyone needs. But it looks cool. The blades can be put in any utility knife, snap-off utility knife. Um, and the, it works okay. It's a really uncomfortable form factor compared to an actual pencil, uh, particularly for woodworking. And this is more carpentry size with its 3mm uh, lead compared to half mil. All right, I'll get that set up for the other one. So that means putting the mask back on. Just, just fall apart. Gary asks if the ball gouge will fit on his grinder uh, or fit on the mini carver. It won't fit on the mini carver. That ball gouge, if you don't know, ball gouge has a standard thread for uh, four and four and a half inch grinders, so it doesn't fit with the brass whatever it is, you know, step down adapter, take that out, should fit on your grinder. Uh, won't fit on the mini carve because like that would be pretty awkward anyway, but this doesn't have external threads, it's only internal threads, so you have to s screw into it to um, attach it. So ball gouge, is, this is where some of the overlap in the uh, Arbitec products confuse me a bit. Um, I don't know if there's better to have one or the other. The ball gouge does leave a really clean cut, I've found, probably cleaner than the Mini Pro in most circumstances, and it's good for hogging out material. You can do undercuts with it, but in what I've done in the past, it hasn't been the most useful tool. That being said, I, when I made a um, leaf bowl, I really enjoyed using this on it. So for uh, steeper bowls and things like that, this really does shine. It's just I haven't used it a lot. Hopefully that answers that question.
Okay, so uh, it's been a while since I've used the mini carver, or actually any power carver. I haven't done a lot of that this year, so I've kind of forgotten. Uh, the mini carver, can, the mini industrial blade, this one here, man, that can hog out material quickly, and it's a really straight line in both circumstances. A little bit less straight uh, on the mini pro. That being said, that's a very straight, straight line, straight up and down, where we've got a much nicer, uh, what would that be, box core type bit profile, so a nice circle. So that's a more pleasant profile, but this is smaller, so it uh, depends on what you're wanting to do in your carving. I can see a use case for both of them. Uh, so we're looking at a 4mm kerf on the mini industrial versus an 8mm kerf on the Mini Pro. This was a grabbier cut on the Mini Industrial, that's the old blade. Uh, and yeah, that, I mean that's fine. The Mini Pro uh, was a lot smoother, but this definitely hogs out material quicker until you go on its face and then it, you just can't quite get that planing action very easily. Yes, sorry, I was turning off the sound while I was using the grinder because it's an obnoxious sound. In the future, what I want to do is set up a compressor software-wise so that when it hits a certain point, it just really ramps it right down. But I don't know how to do that just yet. Uh, I may need someone in here as a camera operator, but currently my camera operator is upstairs putting Christmas decorations up uh, on the walls. So, <laughs> um, it's, it's a little bit harder, like I don't have that uh, audio or video feedback of what I look like or sound like on camera um, while doing these live streams and it's obviously hard to review it. So I need to do some more testing, but YouTube's interface for streaming confuses the heck out of me. Okay, so I think the initial impression is that the Mini Pro is pretty neat. For my application, because I never used the Mini Turbo on its stick, I always took it off because I didn't like it. Uh, this would probably be a bit better because it's a more versatile cut. I can rotate the cutter or the cutting tool a little bit more, get a bit more cutting. Um, if you've already got a Mini Turbo, should you get one? Oh, I don't know. The Mini Carver, if you've got a Mini Carver, probably, because this has dust collection when you actually hook it up and just don't use your shirt for dust collection instead. Yeah, it's a, as I said, a lot of their products are in this weird spot where they have a fair bit of overlap depending on what tools you've already got. If you've got all of them, this new tool doesn't really seem to do anything the others don't. But on the Mini Carver, it's much better than this because you get more versatility since you can't use this and do template carving on the mini carver. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be about $75. It is available for sale in Australia and Germany and other countries coming 2020. So New Zealand might already have it, but those are the two that are specifically listed, which is weird, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I do like the mini industrial much more than this stamped metal one. Initially this blade was about twice the price of this blade and now this blade is about twice the price of this blade. I think they're not aiming to be complete replacements but more if you want a more premium cutter for certain applications um, definitely nicer. The mini industrial can be sharpened but you can't rotate it, so you have to take it off the machine, sharpen it, put it back on. These you can rotate it and then come back to um, sharpening later on, or you can replace the cutter. Presumably you can get replacement cutters for a bit cheaper, 
uh, but given my two cuts with it, I haven't exactly found that out yet. But yeah, that's, that's promising. Um, I'll be doing a review on it sometime over Christmas, hopefully get it out the first couple of weeks of January, but at this stage it just depends on other people more than anything, making sure that the Christmas break isn't too hectic uh, and we don't all melt. There are parts of Australia very, 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 very hot. We're only getting a couple of hot days down here in the Yarra Valley. So hopefully, uh, won't be too unmanageable in here. Check for questions. Okay, so if anyone is still hanging around, um, that's really all I wanted to demonstrate. If you've got any questions, fire them off. If you've got any thoughts on like the live feed, let me know. Obviously, audio is something I need to figure out. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that's not working properly how I wanted it to. But yeah, uh, now I'm running through the X-T30 Fuji camera, which looks much nicer than the webcams I had in previous attempts. The only problem with the Fuji is that it doesn't have an AC adapter. Fuji Australia don't stock it for some reason. So unfortunately, it it's going to limit how long I can do a live stream for. Probably longer than what I can physically handle in one go. So, you know, it's probably a compromise I can work with for now until I find an AC adapter for it. If you are after any more live content uh, today, Dave's Dave Stanton has a live stream that he does at 11 a.m. Australian time, so that's in half an hour uh, if you check out his channel. But for now, that's all I've really got to present for you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Gary, the advantage of having all their stuff is um, uh, <laughs> you can do different size work more easily. So the turbo plane, great tool for stock removal, but as you get down to finer and finer detail, you do kind of need different tools. The, where did I put it? Uh, the mini industrial is great, but sometimes I've even gone back to the old stamped metal blade because it has a really fine curve it's about two millimeters so sometimes it's just a matter of scale um, a lot of projects are start with turbo plane and slowly work down once i've refined the shapes but it does get a point where you probably want to switch to a fordham or other rotary tools and use grinding burrs because they can get smaller uh, by the same token if you are mostly doing small detail start with a rotary tool like the Fordham and perhaps add a mini carver or the turbo plane to do your initial roughing out or a bandsaw and those sort of that sort of progression can work well most power carving is just a matter of the right tool is based on the scale you're working on doing giant things get a chainsaw uh, anything else turbo plane some sort of two inch disc whether it's the mini turbo mini industrial <laughs> or what have you and then Fordham after that uh, that's one thing that I will be thinking about more and putting in more tests for for the review is where does the mini pro fit in and is it actually worth buying over a different tool or not Thank you for tuning in. Merry Christmas to all. Um, hopefully I'll have a video or two out next week uh, and then it'll probably be, and that will probably be it for the year.
Thanks for watching.